The 2x1 is the most basic and commonly built starter base in the entire game. Whether you're a brand new player who's just starting out, or a seasoned PvP Chad who needs something quick and easy to slap down as they rack up guns. Or maybe you're even a clan member putting up an outpost for farming in the snow. The 2x1 is always a fast and easy choice. But they're prone to getting cracked open with four rockets, and they have limited storage and visibility. So what if we could keep the same simple, easy starter footprint, but fix all of those issues? I present to you, the Chad Cabin. The Chad Cabin is a surprisingly durable, fully outfitted solo starter base that anyone can build and use. It features an evil style high visibility airlock, drop off storage and locker space, ample room for smelting ore, a dedicated drone accessible vending machine, and a spacious 15 rocket core that has the equivalent of 10 large boxes in storage capacity. Whether as a farm base, an outpost, or a low-key main base for a casual solo or duo, this base is a huge step up from your traditional 2x1. With such an efficient build cost and upkeep, if you lay low enough and stay friendly with your neighbors, you could live out an entire wipe in this thing with only a single farm run. So let's take a tour of the base. Climbing up the stairs of our deck, we enter into our Evil Worst style airlock. With a combination of glass windows and a shop front, we get excellent visibility to check our surroundings, spot out door campers, and safely trade with other players who are outside. Opening up this garage door reveals the first half of the base. We see a locker, an assortment of drop storage, and half of our furnaces. The other half are in our airlock straight through here, along with a vending machine for storage or to sell items while we're away from the base. It's drone accessible as well, and if you're worried about it attracting too much attention, you can leave it as a sheet metal wall instead. Entering into the core, we see our tier 3 workbench on top of a triangle floor tile, which can easily be used to deploy your research table or repair bench when needed. Since they aren't damaged when picking them up or deploying them, feel free to do this as much as you want. On our right, we have two drop boxes, room for a couple small batteries, and four large boxes easily accessible underneath. Turning around, we have our main loot room with another five large boxes, a campfire, a small box, our sleeping bag, and of course, our TC. That pretty much makes up the base. So let's learn how to build it. Start the build by placing a low foundation and a raised foundation, with a triangle foundation in front of the low one. Close the low foundation in with half walls, like so. Then wrap your way around with walls and finish off the starter with a single door in this space. Now cap it off with roofs and you're safe. Your tool cupboard should be placed next flush against both of these walls. Use the line on the foundation to visually aid in making sure that the TC is straightly aligned. In order to make sure it's as tight as possible, push the TC back until you feel it touch the wall, then pull back towards you exactly one pixel and strafe to the left. And that's a perfect placement right there. Always remember to lock your TC so that people going deep or raiders have to destroy it before griefing your base. Come outside and place a twig foundation here then hop up and place a half wall on top of it and a triangle floor tile on top of that. This will allow you to go back inside and place a floor tile here for storage. Then you can go back outside and demolish the twig we used to place it. Before we start collecting resources and making progression, we need an airlock so that if someone kills us at our door, we don't immediately lose all our loot. Come inside and place a wall frame here with a double door inside of it opening towards you. Now if we open our door like so, and die, nobody can pass through. This gives us a fighting chance in the event we die to a door camper. Finally, place this triangle floor tile pointing towards our entrance so that we can more easily traverse the base. Then we can start outfitting it. Our tier 1 workbench can be placed against the wall on this triangle, and a couple of furnaces can go here temporarily. Our first large box goes against this back wall. Once again, use the line in the stone foundation to help. Make sure that it's flush and perfectly parallel, otherwise other placements will be difficult later. This is the bare minimum we'll need to get out there and start farming up. 
But our base is still vulnerable if we die with the airlock open because the whole base is exposed. So let's add one more layer of doors to protect us. Surround the low triangle with half walls and put a door frame on either side. Then cap it off with the roof. We're gonna place a single door in each one of these frames with the left one opening towards us and the right one opening away from us. If you didn't wanna have the vending machine in your build, just make the left one a wall instead of a door. At this point, we can put the furnaces into their final location as well, inside of the airlock like this. Once you've got a tier two workbench and the garage door blueprint, you can move on to the next phase of the build. Replace your tier one with the tier two and switch this double door out for a garage door. Then upgrade the frame that it's placed inside of to sheet metal. This isn't needed for raid cost, but it'll make our box placement a whole lot easier. This next box placement is probably the most difficult one in the entire build. Open up your airlock door like so and position yourself in the doorway. Then line up the box with the same strategy as before, flushing it up against the box in front of it and pulling back exactly one pixel, then strafing to the left. If you've done it correctly, this large box should be placeable extremely far back towards the TC. This box is the most important because once it's down, you can place your sleeping bag in its final position. Prior to placing this box, you'll have to use temporary positions for your sleeping bag. Now we can fill out the top shelf of our main loot room. Jump up and place this large box as far back and to the left as possible. It doesn't need to be perfect though. As you can see here, I didn't get it totally flush. Crouch on the shelf like so and place this large box as far away from you as possible. Once again, it doesn't need to be perfect. Place your campfire as far to the left as possible, ideally touching the box on the left. If you've done it well, you should be able to jump and place this small box as well. Now let's finish the rest of the storage in our core. Come down into this empty space and align your first box precisely with both walls. This has to be pixel perfect, so use the same strategy as before by touching the back wall, pulling back one pixel, and strafing to the left. Now make your way around, squeezing the next two boxes in the appropriate empty spaces, ensuring that they are placed as far towards the back wall as possible. If you placed both of these boxes correctly, you should be able to jump up top and place the last one with a little bit of trial and error. You may have to jiggle this one around a bit. A small box can go underneath of our workbench, and the last thing you can do in this room when you get the BP for it is place these two drop boxes. Just make sure that they're above the half wall that's underneath. If they intersect, you won't be able to place your honeycomb later. Now we have a ton of storage and workspace to get things done, but our base is still a four rocket raid. In order to beef this place up, we need to do three things. Upgrade, honeycomb, and build our final airlock. So I'll show you each one of these in order. I'll also be building the rest of the base at its final level of material upgrade. So you'll have to decide when to make those upgrades yourself as resources come in. Let's start by upgrading the core. Upgrade every wall, every ceiling, and every foundation to sheet metal. The door frame can remain stone, however, it is notable that raiders can save a small amount of sulfur by using explosive ammo when raiding the door frame to go through a bit cheaper than if they were to use rockets on the door. If you want to avoid giving them this discount, you can upgrade the door frame to sheet metal as well. So now the upgrades are out of the way. Our base is a 7 rocket raid, but that's not good enough. We want that full 15, so let's move on to the honeycomb. Come outside to the TC side of the base on the long end and place a sheet metal foundation here. Follow it up with two sheet metal full walls and a sheet metal ceiling. Do the same on the back side of this same square with a foundation, two full walls, and a ceiling. Now on the airlock side, we're also gonna add honeycombing, but it only needs to be stone. Start with a low foundation, two stone half walls, two stone full walls, and a ceiling. Go to the other long end and do the same thing. A stone foundation, two stone half walls, two stone full walls, 
and a ceiling. Finally, honeycomb the roof as well. It's pretty simple. Line your way around the two square tiles with half walls and cap it off with two square roofs. And that's your completed honeycombing. Replace this sheet metal door with your vending machine. If you plan on using it for storage instead of as a shop, remember to disable broadcasting so it doesn't show up on the map and give away your position. Now we can move on to the final stage of the build. Come outside and upgrade everything on this side of the airlock to sheet metal. Add a low stone foundation here and a high sheet foundation here. A sheet metal wall goes on the outside and both of these ceilings should be sheet metal as well. You can lay down the remaining high foundations for the airlock like so. Come inside the airlock foundations and place a window frame on either side. A single door frame goes on the right and a wall frame goes on the left. Place stone ceilings overhead. Outfit each of the window frames with glass windows and place a shop front in the wall frame. A single door goes in the single door frame as well. Fill in all four empty sockets with wall frames and then place a garage door inside of each one. Three more furnaces go in the sunken space in front of the airlock. Place a locker in the triangle on the left and make sure that it's flush against the wall. This will allow the barbecue and small box placement next to it. Your research table can find a permanent home up against this window if you desire with a drop box underneath of it. Otherwise, just the box is fine if you don't mind picking up the research table every time. And that pretty much completes the base design. However, currently it's only a 13 rocket raid and I told you it would be 15 rockets. That's because for the final piece of protection, we need a single armored door. Now if you don't manage to find one on your travels, you'll have to craft one, which you'll need a tier 3 workbench to do. So place this tier 3 workbench. Oh yeah, I like this shotgun trap placement as well, but you're free to put them around your base wherever you'd like. With your tier 3 workbench and your armored single door crafted, remove this sheet single door and replace it with the armored one. And there you go. Depending on the height that you made your original foundations, you may need to add the deck shown in the intro. To do so, add two wooden foundations here, and then a set of wooden stairs like so. For the farm space, come over to the right side and add a low wall. Flush up the planter against it, and then place the remaining two low walls after. There you go. You can make the overhang as well if you plan on using a sprinkler and ceiling lamp setup. And that's pretty much the base. As with all of my designs, this base is only a platform for you to modify or expand upon to your liking. If you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please don't hesitate to do so in the comments. I'd like to give a special thanks to Day Day and Soren for helping me with the intro cinematics and Stenchmaker for some last minute feedback. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.